Okay. I hope all of you can uh, see me and hear me, and uh, I would like to send a warm welcome to all, to all of you uh, to another webinar of ISWA, the International Solid Waste Association. Uh, I'm very happy that you are with us still as a we webinar, but I think uh, the, the big advantage of a webinar is that it is much easier to join us, that you do not need to come to Brussels, although of course uh, this would have been a, a very nice occasion to meet and to discuss, especially as the topic of separate collection I think is a topic that is uh, uh, affecting every one of us. And we have all some ideas, some knowledge. Uh, surely we all have our opinion on collection, separate collection of municipal waste. Uh, so probably a live meeting would have been even more lively and more, more engaging, but please, uh, uh, try to, try to, to file questions, try to be, as active as possible after our um, wonderful uh, presentations, because we have four four great speakers with us to to today. Uh, just to start and to name Nancy Stra Strand from Nor Norway, a very active person in ISWA as well, and uh, she, with a few <laughs> others, even started uh, a new project within the International Solid Waste Association that is focusing on, on the needs uh, and the discussion within Europe, so a kind of European uh, round table, which is targeting ISWA members in Europe, of course, where we can discuss all the topics uh, that are popping up in Europe, very often popping up uh, because of some ideas of the European Commission or the European Parliament. Uh, the, se the second speaker who is with us today is Steve Kla Klaus. He's uh, uh, working for the Association of the European Producers of Steel packaging so you might ask yourself oh what he has to do with municipal waste collection but uh, also the steel packaging producers they have to be involved somehow in the discussion and actively uh, in this matter as well because they have to fulfill targets together with the obliged uh, industry uh, so they have a big interest that the collection is done in a good way so that they get uh, as much material uh, back to feed uh, their their melters again. The third speaker will be Vanya Veras, uh, Secretary General of, of Municipal Waste Europe. So uh, joining uh, the know-how and intelligence of all the waste management companies which are owned uh, by the municipalities, by the local authorities. So pooling an incredible uh, know-how and experience how collection of municipal waste, how separate collection is done in the best way. Uh, a lot of learnings uh, during her career, uh, what is working, what is not working. Finally, uh, we have a little replacement. Uh, Amanda from Italy was unfortunately no longer able uh, to, jo to join us. But a big thanks to my colleague Monica, who jumped in today on very short notice, and she will provide us with the view of, of the members of EXPA, the Extended Producer Responsibility Alliance, a club of 29 EPR systems from all over the world, who of course have some expertise uh, uh, how a packaging could be collected separately in the best way, and of course having, having a strong opinion on this as well. But wh why have we invited these uh, four uh, fantastic spe speakers? Why are we discussing suddenly again a um, uh, separate collection of municipal waste in the European U Union? This goes back two or three years ago uh, when the European Commission, especially uh, Vice President Timmermans, had the idea that one of the barriers for a better performance of collection sorting and recycling of waste is the diversity of our waste management systems. So, and I 
formulated now very black and white, with, which is of course not fully reflecting the true, the truth. If you tell all municipalities and all inhabitants that we have to organize separate collection of municipal waste in exactly the same way all over Europe, this would solve all our problems. So a discussion was initiated and started, which is uh, always, I think, ve very good. And uh, this is the way how we can make progress. Uh, a mandate was given to the Joint Research Center of the European Commission sitting in Sevilla uh, to make a study and to develop a proposal what can be harmonized by the European Commission. So what, what can they propose to the member states? Uh, where, we, where can we harmonize? Where can we streamline to improve overall our uh, performance of collection and especially to make it easier for our inhabitants huh, to collect uh, the, the municipal waste, to collect their packaging and their other uh, uh, waste stree stree streams. We are discussing this now for nearly two years. Uh, unfortunately, JSC had no time uh, to join us to today. Uh, we discussed it within the ISWA European round table and Nancy will present the results and all, all the other speakers, probably you as well, were involved in, 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 in some of the discussions. We are very keen to see the, the outcome now step by step, what will be the re recommendations of the European Union, but I think all of us, we can still make some, some impact. We can still make some proposals and recommendations. And I am especially happy to, to have all of you with us because you are coming mostly from the local level, huh? the local level where you need perhaps guidance, where you have uh, done your experience. So, so will it help you in your local uh, situation? if the European Union is harmonizing something. So that's that's somehow the frame for today. I talked enough and I talked a lot. And now we will go to our uh, speakers, which are the most important part of today, to provide us with their opinion or the opinion of the network they are representing. So Nancy, I will pass the word to to you. We had a very interesting and very intensive discussion during this uh, ISWA EU roundtable, uh, which you initiated in the end. So, so uh, we are very keen to learn more. What was the outcome of this discussion? Nancy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Joachim. Um, thanks for a very nice introduction. So today I have um, uh, ISWA background um, because I'm, uh, as Joachim uh, very nicely put it, I'm an active member, I'm a member of the board of ISWA and I'm also active when it comes to European questions in particular. But today in my daily work, I, I'm in, uh, sitting in Norway working for the national organization Waste Norway. So, but today, I would like to present to you um, the um, results from a discussion we had by um, in November um, last year, where we discussed this question about how do we want and how do we would we like to see the harmonization of waste collection throughout Europe. And as um, as um, Joachim said. We started this, uh, we call it European uh, Roundtable uh, Networking, because uh, as ISFA members, we are a lot of uh, national organizations, but there are also companies, municipalities, uh, individual members, and we wanted to have a meeting place for discussion uh, across all these uh, members and to learn from each other and exchange knowledge and uh, of course, points of view. So we started in, in um, August last year and our ambition is to have like three, four webinar with, with um, different topics uh, each year. So, but let me just start by saying that 
all what I'm presenting today is such actually a result of a discussion based on the participants at this webinar in November. So this is not an official ISFA policy. Um, so we are a committee and then as you can see, Joachim is also part of this committee and we have uh, Arne Ragosnik from Austria, who is vice president of ISFA and we have Thomas Obermeyer from Germany and then Ole Morten Pedersen from, from Denmark to, together with the ISFA secretariat. So we had a um, seminar in, in a webinar in, in November and presented different uh, cases for, throughout Europe and examples of how um, waste collection is taking place. Um, also different kind of technologies uh, for waste collection. And then we had a, a discussion with, okay, what advantages and challenges do you see when it comes to harmonization of waste collection? And taking into account that we are talking about uh, countries from, from Italy in the south to uh, Norway in the north. So uh, quite different points of views. But um, uh, interesting enough, um, there were also a lot of, of common views. But I think everybody uh, has the same challenge that we will collect, collect more waste and we, in order to reach the new targets, we need to uh, collect more waste and we need to collect it separately. And in order to, to, to do that, we, we, uh, we need to have simple messages and we need to find a way of uh, uh, standardize how, especially not only the waste streams, but also how we collect and report the data about the waste streams. So that might be a sort of a um, main uh, conclusion from, from, um, from the webinar. And uh, um, to start with the yes, um, because there will also knows, but start with the yes. And this is of course, um, as, as uh, uh, some of you know, uh, there has been an extensive work in the Scandinavian countries starting with, with Denmark and uh, Sweden has been an active part. And um, I've taken the liberty to, to have a, introduce a picture here uh, from, uh, from examples from Norwegian packaging. So um, from this webinar, we agreed that yes, we would like to see a harmonized pictogram. And some thought it should also be harmonized in terms of, of colors. But as you can see, not everybody um, had this, this same thinking about colors uh, because a lot of colors are, are already in place in, in several European countries, not easy to, to change that. But uh, one idea uh, might be that it could be possible to start simple and, and uh, have a transition period. And this Scandinavian uh, model could be used, uh, the Scandinavian uh, pictogram series could be used as a model here. But as been the uh, experience from the Scandinavian countries that you need to, to work together, the municipalities, the producer, the, uh, the uh, producer responsibility organization, they have to work together. And uh, I think one important point here um, was that we also have to take into account that digital solutions are coming up and digital paths and digital watermarks on, on uh, products and uh, packaging um, are coming. So we need to, to make that part of planning such a harmonized um, pictogram and color system. But when it comes to harmonization of collection models, there was a no from this webinar. So, uh, and I think uh, we all agreed on the, on the main conclusion is that this, is, uh, this has to be decided locally 
and it has to be part of the municipal responsibility. And uh, local solutions ask for local decisions. Um, but maybe we also have a tendency to, to uh, look too much on the differences and maybe we can also uh, sort of work towards a more harmonized uh, collection. And maybe there are some points that we are able to, to harmonize that I'm, I might say for my personal um, or my personal point of view. So when we talked about uh, digitalization, and uh, there is a definite yes that we need a uh, uh, harmonized data. We definitely, uh, there will definitely be more and more new technology uh, coming in. And we see more and more than if it comes to sensors, but also on, on, uh, on the packaging. Uh, on the collection equipment, uh, there will be more and more digital solutions. And uh, we need to make sure that we actually can exchange data. And when it comes to um, sort of establishing this uh, standard, that's actually a, a big challenge uh, uh, across Europe. But it's very important. So I have a little problem on my computer. Okay, so we also discussed, um, are we able to harmonize the waste streams? And since we already agreed that uh, to harmonize the collection models um, are difficult, but also to harmonize what kind of waste do we collect as uh, waste fractions. That also varies across Europe. So, uh, but still there is a need to standardize and harmonize the, the waste streams. And uh, in particular, what kind of materials are we supposed uh, to sort to uh, collect separately and to recycle separately and recycle the same way. So I think this is a, it is a question for pr production and also because the we need quality standards for recycled materials and we need to actually think about um, household and commercial waste because they consist of the same materials and uh, and this is a challenge when it can when it comes to responsibility. Uh, and the, the, the legislation. Um, and we know that um, customers and industry that are using recycled materials also have their quality standards that we are uh, that we need to, to meet. And, and uh, that must be the sort of starting point of making quality standard. That is what do the customers want? And uh, last but not least, we discussed that uh, we also need to think about harmonize uh, the framework um, conditions. And uh, I'm sorry, I have a little computer problem because um, I'm not able to change my slides for some reason. Uh, so, sorry about that, but harmonized waste framework condition, that was the, the last uh, point. And then in the end, I wanted to um, invite you to our next webinar, which takes place as part of IFAT in the first week of June, but um, it will also be possible to um, um, participate online.
So Joachim, I think I had to give the word back to you because my computer uh, yes. stopped in uh, one way or another here. So Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Denancy, for, 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 for this interesting presentation, despite the technical problems. I think our laptops as well tell us that it's time for um, face-to-face -face meetings and they are all fed up with Zoom and WebEx and Teams and wh whatever solution was developed. I think this is a clear, clear sign. Thanks a lot, dear Nancy. So let's move us very quickly to Steve uh, to provide us with a kind of industry opinion, understanding how, how we should move forward uh, in, in a harmonization of separate collections. Steve, are you with us still? Or did we lose you to a can? No, you didn't lose me. I'm here. Very good. The so audience. the floor I'm alive, is alive first. and well, and hope all yeah. of the audience is alive as well. Um, Nancy, thank you for, for this uh, great presentation. Um, I would suggest now that I would uh, share my screen now. Everybody can see my screen now? Perfect. Perfect, yeah. Steve. Good afternoon. Um, interesting uh, presentation, as I already stated. And Nancy um, shared insights on quality standards and was referring to the fact that what do customers want uh, with regards to quality is an important uh, item, of course. And, and I will elaborate a bit on that. Too. But let, let me first introduce um, the summary here. It's a bit strange to immediately go to a summary. Eh? Mandatory recycling targets, eh? overall targets. We have, of course, material specific ones. And what I want to flag over here is that in the 2018 Packaging and Packaging Waste Directive that is being revised as we speak, yeah, there is a split target now mentioned for steel, ferrous metals on the one hand, and aluminium. So that is very important. It's no longer uh, material, uh, it's no longer metals, eh, a recycling rate, but it's a specific one for ferrous metals and uh, for aluminium. That is important. And also when considering separate collection, that it plays an important role. Um, what we also uh, see is a, a call for increased recyclability. Uh, um, you need to put uh, packaging on the market that is highly recyclable. Yeah? Um, light weighting is good. Having barrier materials in it is also good to increase the lifespan of products. Uh, that is very uh, true also, but we need to work on recyclability. If we move to a circular economy, we need, really need to focus on increasing recyclability going from mono materials, uh, no complex materials. And if we have complex materials, avoid that you can't separate uh, one material from another and to go for high uh, quality recycling. Um, setting up uh, separate waste collection schemes, which is the heart uh, of the, the, the crux of the matter here in, in this webinar, of course, is the question on harmonized collection. Yeah? To what extent is that possible, yes or no? Um, should we go all the way in Europe for a harmonized collection or should we consider the local and regional uh, circumstances? Um, um, raising the question uh, pro all is provocative, uh, but I think we, we, we saw in Nancy's presentation also what um, yeah, different stakeholders think the answer to this is. Um, harmonized separate collection or separate collection uh, uh, at a larger scale, uh, to a larger extent. Um, we also need to look at uh, optimized sorting facilities. It's good to go for co-mingled collection, where you have different materials collected together. But how about the sorting facilities? Um, do we have state-of-the-art sorting facilities, enabling to separate uh, all the material fractions? Or do we um, leave um, the sorting facility with bales uh, within one finds um, a lot of contamination. So it's really important to have state-of-the-art sorting facilities too. And then what Nancy already mentioned on, on standardized, uh, yeah, on standardization of quality. Yeah, we all know uh, quality, uh, yeah, poor quality in is poor quality out. So we need to work in all, yeah, uh, uh, spots of the supply chain on uh, high quality assurance. Last but not least is about consumer involvement. Yeah, um, We need to foresee, of course, the, the, the relevant infrastructure, eh? the relevant infrastructure, not only in the houses eh? to have uh, separate bags or bins, but also in the street, allowing 
uh, all of us to, uh, to free ourselves of, uh, of our waste and to have it in the right bins. Yeah? So that is very important, not only at home, but also on the go. And then, yeah, it's, it's, it's knocking on an open door. It's, uh, it's knocking down an open door, sorry, is the awareness raising campaigns because repeating your message over and over again is, is, is really key. A call for action towards us all, right? consumers to do the right thing. It is no use in having a great separate waste collection scheme if we, the consumer, do not act upon it, and if we do not put the waste in the right bin, and if we do not put the, the waste in a correct manner in the right bin. So, and those awareness raising campaigns, they can come from yeah, authorities, they can come from EPR schemes, they can come from brand owners, whatever, but we need to collaborate on this. Yeah, Repeating uh, messages to uh, consumers is really important. That is my summary. Let me now first introduce who we are. As Joachim already said, Appeal represents the manufacturers of steel for packaging. So we deliver, we provide steel to the, for instance, the can makers and the food can makers, the aerosol makers. And the members are six. It's Acharia d'Italia, ArcelorMittal, Liberty, US Steel Krajice, ThyssenKrupp and Tata Steel. Yeah? So we represent uh, that steel for packaging market here in Europe. Um, but perhaps when it comes to um, collection to sorting, let me now give the floor to a video of 70 seconds. When we throw an item of packaging into the bin, at home or on the go, it should be the beginning of a new journey. The new Circular Economy Action Plan, a building block of the European Green Deal, aims to ensure that all packaging on the EU market is reusable or recyclable in an economically viable way by 2030. Of all the packaging materials that can be found in any waste stream, steel is certainly the easiest and the most economical to recover due to its unique magnetic properties. Well-established and highly efficient collection and sorting systems are already in place throughout much of Europe, and today, some countries are already recycling more than 90% of steel packaging. But we believe that optimized separate collection and sorting are key to improving the recycling rates in all countries and fully closing the loop. The sustainable packaging choice for the 21st century. Right, yeah, uh, images, uh, they say more than a, a thousand words. So I believe that in this presentation, you could have seen that separate collection is really the way forward to go to a more, more circular economy in, uh, in, in Europe, of course. Um, we at Appeal, we defined uh, a vision, a 2025 vision to have no uh, steel packaging to landfill by 2025. And it's good to have a vision because we want steel packaging to be used over and over again because it has the uh, potential to be recycled over and over again without loss of the inherent properties of the material. I know that is a very technical line yeah, that I take here, but it's true. It's, it's a circular material, but defining a vision is not enough. Okay? We need to go for the, from vision to reality. And what we did last year uh, here, um, we, uh, we, we drafted a book. Uh, you can see it on screen also. Uh, we drafted the book. Why steel recycles forever? And it's really to turning that vision into reality via the practicalities of it. And, and, and we defined six policy recommendations. Optimized separate collection, the key of our discussions over here. Pre-treatment prior to incineration. What I mean by this is that when you still have a residual waste bag, you will still have a residual waste bag at home, you, you take it to incineration, but there could be valuable materials in there still. And prior to going to incineration, we call for state-of-the-art separation prior to taking that, that bin into the incinerator. If you have simple magnets eh, prior to putting it into an incinerator, you can take out that valuable steel for packaging before uh, having it uh, incinerate. And by the way, when you incinerate it, from the bottom ashes, we will be able to recuperate the steel for packaging elements too, but with a lower quality than having them taken out prior to incineration. That's our second um, recommendation, policy recommendation. 
The third one is, and that's in our vision, no recyclable package, packaging to landfill. Eh? We talk about steel for packaging, but this goes also, of course, for other uh, materials that can be recycled. Yeah? Uh, and by the way, in the Packaging and Packaging Waste Directive is stated that by 2030, all uh, packaging should be recyclable uh, and reusable. But it's not because it's recyclable or reusable that in practice it is, it is recycled. So you really need to take uh, the valuable um, elements away from landfilling and move up in the waste hierarchy. That's our third policy recommendation. The fourth one is a so-called second overbound in sorting plants. Yeah? When you take your uh, lightweight fraction and you put it on a, uh, on, on, on a, on a conveyor belt, eh? you will uh, put it in, in a trommel. It will take off the plastic bag. Yeah? And then all elements will be separated. But you have small elements and they can fall through the holes of that trommel. Yeah? And then you would lose the valuable uh, steel for packaging closures, eh? caps, slits, etc. And so we call up uh, to the sorting facilities to have a second magnet uh, uh, installed over there to recuperate those small elements also. And we will work together with the supply chain to do more promotion for uh, and a call for uh, collecting and sorting for recycling those little steel uh, elements. Yeah? And then what Nancy also already said uh, on, on quality requirements, uh, that's for obvious reasons. Hey, uh, we want the high quality to get back to our uh, so-called recycling plants. Eh? Because we are recycling plants, we make new steel uh, products from uh, scrap. Yeah, We put scrap together with virgin material, and then we can make new uh, steel uh, uh, products. And it could be uh, in automotive, it could be for uh, wind turbines, but it could also, of course, be again for a, for a food can or a, or a drink can or uh, general line products or aerosols, etc. Yeah? And then last but not least, what I already mentioned is consumer involvement. They are the key um, stone and uh, the key factor in here, because if you don't have a consumer involvement in, in, in this whole uh, scheme, you will not be able to uh, reach those high recycling targets. Um, I already mentioned uh, this. I'm looking into uh, the time here. Uh, I still have some um, seven minutes left. So um, this is about optimized separate collection. It's important, but not only not only in the houses, eh? also uh, on the go. Eh? It's important to have an optimized separate collection over there. Eh? And, and, and this is also a valid statement, of course, if we would have steel uh, packaging waste collected in a mono stream, this, this, will, this would provide us the best quality. But we need to think about other uh, ways of collecting, of course, that steel for packaging too. It could be with other lightweight fraction. It could be only with, uh, with other uh, metals, for instance. It could be with glass, yeah? But there's no one size fits all, yeah? If we talk about optimized separate collection across Europe, always factor in the, le the local circumstance. But also make a distinction between, for instance, urban and rural, yeah? low uh, house buildings or apartment blocks, it's a totally different story. Yeah, we need to factor that in also. Now, uh, the collection schemes, I talked about that. Um, um, yeah, the awareness creating uh, campaigns with regards to cross-contamination. Yeah? What we see in Belgium today is that um, the light uh, weight fraction and that blue bag that you see over there, it is now opened to all uh, plastic packaging, not only the rigid pack plastic packaging from the past, but also the flexible packaging. And that is for obvious reasons, because the targets are set very high for 2025 and 2030, not only for plastics, by the way, but also for other packaging materials. But for plastics, eh, it, it, is, it, it is a challenge. For all materials, it is a challenge. And that is why flexible packaging in Belgium is now included in that blue bag. But the, um, the result is that you can have um, flexible packaging entangled into a food can, yeah? And then you close that food can and then you put it in your uh, blue bag and it goes to the sorting facility. The magnet takes it out, but still there is flexible packaging, flexible plastic in it. So that is a contaminated, there's a, there's a contaminant element. And of course it gives you a lower quality to your, uh, to your uh, steel uh, scrap um, bale. Yeah? And that's why we call upon consumers not to put it inside the food can, yeah? to, but just to put it in, in, in the bag. Yeah? 
What is also important is when you talk about a commingled scheme, yeah, and to have, for instance, steel together with aluminium, together with, uh, with, with, with uh, all types of plastic uh, packaging, you need to avoid, of course, that one material will pay for another material. So it is very important, in, in, in my humble view, it is very important to have a correct cost allocation, that all materials pay their own fair share. Yeah? And that is an important message that I want to send out here too. Um, what I already mentioned is that there is no one size fits all. And when we talk about harmonizing across Europe, harmonizing uh, 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 colors uh, on, on different streams, yeah, it's, it, that, that is going to be very challenging because yeah, you always need to factor in those local regional uh, circumstances. Yeah? Um, the market in Belgium is not the same as the market in Italy or Norway. It is, it is, it is, it is a different world. We need to factor that in. Yeah? Um, that I already explained, the trommel. If you wanna have more insights into it, I can kindly invite you to go to our website and you will find more information in, on, in that booklet on what I specifically mean, because it could be very technical to have a trommel with, with the holes and little things that fall in, in the holes and that are lost if no second magnet would be placed. But please go to our website, uh, steelforpackaging.org or appeal.org. Yeah? Um, the quality requirements, we already talked about that too, that, it, that this is very important, important eh? not only uh, at, at the end, but also in collection, in sorting, in fact, in all steps uh, of that uh, recycling process. Yeah? Um, and then the consumer involvement, what I talked about, eh? recycling starts at home, but as we saw in the last few decades, it's not only about consumption uh, in your house, we do eat, apart from the last two, three years with the COVID, of course, but we do eat a lot uh, on the go. Eh? We do consume a lot on the go and we need to have the right infrastructure uh, in the streets, uh, at the offices also. And it's, uh, it's very important. And it's, it's about education. It's about really going to uh, uh, kindergarten classes, primary schools, secondary schools, businesses, and to, and, and, and to explain why we do it, why do we sort our waste? Eh? It's about the circular economy, but yeah, it's, uh, the, the proof of the pudding is of course in the eating and we need to, we need to act, eh? we need to sort our waste and it's important to send out those awareness raising messages. I think Joachim, um, I will leave it to that. Um, happy to take you. questions, but we will take them after all the presentations, I thank you. Exactly. Thank you very much, Steve. Very appreciated. Uh, now, mo moving further south, uh, after we started our journey today in no Norway, made a necessary stop in Brussels, of course, and now moving to, to one, of the, one of the most southern places in, in the European U Union. One of my favorite places in Europe, I have to admit, Ma Malta, with uh, wonderful history, wonderful sea, wonderful people. So uh, moving to Vanya Veras, sharing with us uh, the opinion of, of, of her members, which are doing the job in the end. Huh? Your, your members have, have finally somehow to live with what Brussels uh, is deciding in the end. So uh, if they would decide that tomorrow all paper collection bins would have been blue, I think there would a lot of trouble with your members huh? or that they have to, to, to use some, some other specific equi equipment. So we are really interested to, to hear the practitioner's point of view on this question. Vanya, the floor is yours. Thank you, Joachim, and thank you for your high praise. I will uh, seek not to disappoint you. Uh, right, let's get this on a big screen. Can everybody see that? Oops, why am I on the second slide? Is that okay? Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you, but we see okay. at the moment only the, the big PowerPoint. Now it's better, now it's perfect. Thank you. Now it's okay? Okay, all right. Um, so, thank you for your introduction Joachim and um, and also for the previous speakers there will of course be some repetition because this is a much discussed issue not only at the moment but uh, 
over the years at Brussels level. So a small introduction first, uh, Muni uh, Municipal Waste Europe was formed in 2009. Uh, so it is over 10 years old. Before COVID, we had a nice celebration of our 10 years. It's a non-profit European umbrella organization and our members are national associations of public waste management. In the main, we also have some city members and some regional members. Uh, to date, we are 21, both uh, accounting members and observers. Right, just a moment. I have to figure out how I change slide. There we go. Okay, so coming to um, European legislation, separate collection, uh, do's and don'ts, and what can be done, and why are we discussing this anyway in the first place? So we are in the process of going from a linear economy to a circular economy. My generation and previous generations, we learned to buy, use and throw away, dispose. And we are having to overturn that now because of the impact that we're having on the, on the planet and have had on the planet. So when the current commission came uh, into its seat, they took a step further than the circular economy that we were already working with, the circular economy package, and they published the European Green Deal. This document seeks to tie in environmental considerations and practices into every single um, piece of European legislation that is in existence. This is why uh, Joachim, myself, Nancy, Steve, everyone working on the European scene is severely overworked at the moment because we have to revise everything. Um, challenging, but necessary. So what does the European Green Deal say about separate collection? Uh, it has asked the European Commission to look into harmonizing it so that everywhere in Europe, we have the same understanding of what we are separately collecting and why. I'll go into the details as uh, my colleagues did previously, but second step, circular economy. Um, in order to close the loops, as previous speakers said, we need to give value to what is in our waste. So as we choose our consumer items when we are in the shops, whether at home, in the supermarket, or on the go. Uh, we need to do the same when we are disposing of the waste, whether it's packaging or textiles or construction demolition waste. If we've done some DIY at home, we have to think about where we are placing them in the waste stream so that they can be sorted and reused. Uh, Currently, we work, when I say we, I mean municipalities. Municipalities have the legal obligation to ensure that European, uh, and then of course national, separate collection obligations are upheld. So municipalities have the obligation to make sure that separate streams are available to the consumer and that they are communicated to the consumer. And we do that in coordination with extended producer responsibility schemes, such as the expert members for packaging. And this is also coming up on textiles. So today we may be focusing more on packaging in our discussion, but this is a very, very important discussion also today on textiles and construction demolition waste is, is close behind. The purpose, of harmonizing a separate collection system or separate collection of any individual item is to increase the quantity collected and the quality collected. It's easy to say, but very, very hard to do because we are talking about very dispersed items that are generated on a daily basis. So what is happening at EU level and why are we discussing it so much at the moment? So the Joint Research Centre has been tasked with studying um, what is current practice in separate collection in the EU, 
and uh, delving into discussions on what could be common practice um, in and as part of the new waste framework directive. That uh, work is part of preparing the revision of the waste framework directive, which we, uh, if timelines are upheld, should have uh, by 2024. Uh, so, okay. So the JRC has um, gone through and listed and discussed with us many options for the harmonization of separate collection. These are the key ones. So harmonization of bin colors, labeling, economic instruments such as pay as you throw and deposit uh, return schemes, frequency of collection and commingling of several waste streams. Some of these are um, happening today and possible, and some of them are impossible at European level, either uh, for practical reasons or for legal reasons. So I'll just take bin colours first. If we were to harmonise, I think I have something here, there we go. Um, if we were to harmonise all bin colours throughout Europe, so blue means packaging, um, yellow means paper, brown means bio waste and black means mixed waste that would mean replacing all bins throughout europe at a very high financial and material cost so it is impracticable on a, on a practical material and cost level but it is also politically impracticable because many member states have already been using different colors for these waste streams for decades and their consumers their citizens are used to those colors and changing them would require enormous change in behavior at an enormous communication cost so as far as we are concerned at municipal waste europe we um not only are not in favor of it but we warn against it and there is a third reason sorting plants have been already raised as an issue if you have a particular color for packaging um separate collection of packaging all the packaging would go into that one bin so it is inflexible that inflexibility means that it cannot that separate collection stream cannot be linked in with the existing or planned sorting plant technology you might have a sorting plant in a location which is perfectly functioning uh, and will be functioning for the next 10 to 20 years. And it is specialized in separating, for example, paper from plastic. If you put all of the packaging waste in the one bin, that sorting plant will be incapable of sorting out the contents of that bin. And again, you have both political and financial considerations here to take into account. So this is the third and most important reason for which uh, we do not support the harmonization of bin colors. Uh, what we do support is a voluntary labeling system, which we have been discussing um, with the commission because it is already in place in the Nordic countries. And this is the Nordic pictogram system. And, many of our members already implement it. I'll, you've seen some examples. I'll just go into this a little bit more, but just bear with me one moment because I want to go through uh, the other points that I raised on this slide. So economic instruments can be and are of, of great use in both collecting quantity and quality of separately collected waste items. Pay as you throw works in a number of member states. And the way that it works is having first transparency um, in the cost that citizens pay for the management of their waste, collection and treatment. Um, and then using that cost to differentiate between valuable streams and costly streams. So 
streams which are covered by extended producer responsibility uh, systems in a pay-as-you-throw system will be cost-free for the citizen so long as they sort out the waste from that stream into the um, particular bin where they should be collected and only put uh, what is not capable of being recycled or separately collected into the black bin, which is the mixed stream. Therefore, the cost of the mixed stream to the citizen is high. So as to incentivize them to put as little as possible in that black bin. This, however, does not work in countries where there is no separate uh, charge to citizens for their waste treatment. And this is the case in a great number of countries in the EU. There will be one charge, for example, either as part of uh, general taxation or as a local um, tax, which is used for anything from road repairs, lighting and um, waste management. In these cases, we do have some good examples where pay as you throw is working. And that is where the incentive is something unrelated to direct cost. For example, uh, the better a municipality's citizens separately collect, so the higher the quantity of separately collected materials are collected from there for recycling, um, the more likely it is that they will have investment locally in parks, children's playgrounds, football pitches, and such like. So this is another option where cost is not transparent. Then the Commission is also, and uh, if you are following the revision of the packaging and packaging waste directive into regulation, you will see that uh, the proposal is to have an obligatory deposit return system for packaging. Um, and this is under discussion now in the decision making process. Uh, and this is another way of making sure that quantity and quality are collected and it can be applied to packaging. It cannot be applied to all waste streams. Moving on to frequency of separate of uh, collection, waste collection in general. This is the point where um, we absolutely do not agree as municipalities that this, this cannot be decided at an intranational level, so at a European level. It is a very local discussion and a local decision. Because imagine if uh, Europe were to tell all member states that they had to collect all packaging from all high-rise, so multi-family buildings, um, on a Tuesday. It just wouldn't work uh, because different areas of Europe work differently. The other reason for which we do not agree with this is that it is not a European decision. It is entirely against the principle of subsidiarity where member states uh, have the right to choose how they implement European legislation and how they manage their own business. Um, Commingling of waste streams, again, this is something which needs to be uh, decided at a local level. The um, quality of the stream, the cleanliness of the stream after sorting depends on the sorting plant, not on whether it was commingled or not. Of course, this depends on what you are commingling of, uh, as well. Um, glass should be collected separately. Um, this has been discussed many times, but there are several different materials which, which can be mixed in the same bag and be perfectly clean after separate collection and um, the right quality for recycling. Okay, so now I will move on to the pictures. Very briefly, in 2016, Denmark uh, came up with these pictograms where a color is associated with a symbol and that color represents uh, a type of waste material. So if you look at the hard plastic and the plastic, these, this is in Danish, but uh, if you speak English, you can also understand it. Uh, the background color is purple and there is a different symbol 
uh, determining whether it is a soft plastic or a hard plastic. The idea behind this is that these symbols will be on all products and on all bins where they are to be collected everywhere in the country. This was the Danish, um, the reason for Denmark coming up with this system. So it didn't matter whether you were at home in a small municipality in Copenhagen at the office or in your summer house on the coast, you would have the same symbols on your packaging and the same symbols on your bin. So as far as the consumer is concerned, um, I no longer have to ask my colleague or my friend who is in waste management, which bin to put my waste in. I can tell because I just, it's, it's a, like a game of snap, like we used to play when we were children, just match up the, uh, the symbols and it's clear. And however much communication is, uh, is used by the national level on television, um, door to door, in schools, if you don't have something that is recognizable, there will always be questions and there will be more mistakes because we are human. The other benefit to having the same uh, symbols everywhere in one member state is that uh, you can have one communication campaign. Your videos can be uh, used in every municipality. And the same thing as goes for the leaflets. Um, now, this was so well accepted, uh, well received in Denmark, that it very quickly spread to the other Nordic countries where Norway has already implemented it and is using it. Sweden is very well on the way. They started to implement in the middle of 2020. And um, Finland is also implementing Iceland. And there are several Baltic states who are also implementing it. Last slide, um, just to show you that all of these individual symbols and colors are totally versatile. They are free. They can be downloaded. You can change the um, lettering, which is underneath. Um, Sweden has put the lettering inside the, the colored part of the label. And uh, it is currently voluntary in all member states using it, apart from Denmark, who is making it um, obligatory because uh, the, the majority of Danish municipalities have already implemented it. Um, communication with producers, so packers and fillers and other uh, companies, um, producers, is also um, extremely good because for the first time in, since we've been discussing separate collection and recycling, um, companies are coming into contact with our members, uh, asking them, well, which label should I put on my packaging so that it can be properly sorted and so that I can have access to that material again afterwards. So that communication channel is much clearer now, uh, helped by this labeling system. And as you can see in the, the photo where the man is sorting his waste, there are three different symbols. And that is because in that municipality, they want to collect those three waste types in the one bin, because the sorting plant will sort them out that follows that, uh, that collection and emptying of that bin. And that is what is the most important aspect of this uh, labeling system, that it is flexible and that it doesn't matter whether you are in Oslo or in Copenhagen or in Lisbon or in Athens, it is applicable at very low cost and um, at very high advantage in terms of communication. Um, just a closing fact, yes, municipalities are responsible for uh, implementing all of these rules, um, but it is a cooperation, a cooperation with extended producer responsibility um, organizations 
and it is a cooperation with the producer uh, because a circular economy uh, needs every part in that chain it's no longer linear it's no longer we act alone but we act together thank you very I much think this is a perfect closure of your speech thank you very much dear vanya uh, passing the ball very nicely to monica uh, who is representing uh, the epr systems or many epr systems uh, uh, we we had a interesting discussion internally as well on this top topic and so to bring 29 countries under under one opinion or under one set uh, is not easy as well because this topic is so so influential and and of course every country has has its own system which is of course the very the very best huh? and if we harmonize i think every country believes that we should harmonize following their exper experiences which makes it sometimes a bit challenging dear monica the floor is yours uh, to to inform us about uh, the sorts of of all these uh, extended producer responsibility systems thank you dear Joachim, kim and uh, thank you all uh, apologies that i have some technical issues regarding the um, sh showing myself on the screen but i hope the presentation is interesting enough so that will be Fine. Uh, yes. So just uh, to start with a few words about uh, Express and Producer Responsibility Alliance. We will be 10 years uh, next year, so hopefully no COVID and we will be celebrating accordingly uh, that anniversary. Uh, we have uh, the moment 29 uh, members and partners. Hope uh, next year it will be more, so at least 30. Uh, and uh, what is most important for our uh, members is that they are non-for-profit and they are industry-led and owned. Uh, our members also have over 25 years of uh, uh, cooperation and experience uh, being uh, started uh, EPR systems uh, after uh, the adoption of the Packaging Packaging Waste Directive back in 94. Uh, and of course, they provide um, collection infrastructure for packaging waste uh, to over 200 million people, uh, as well as ensure recycling and recovery of packaging waste uh, every year. Uh, as of, we already heard the, the views of the different stakeholders in the process, and as you can see from this slide, uh, EPR uh, organizations are somewhere in the middle, so they somehow uh, make the link between the different stakeholders uh, in the value chain, and they also uh, provide information uh, to the different stakeholders, thus ensuring that the process is taking place in an efficient way. So. They, they are the link between the uh, obliged industry, so fillers, bottlers, uh, and of course the local authorities uh, in which they cooperate very closely, uh, the sorting and uh, at the end recycling of the uh, packaging waste. Uh, this is uh, just a picture uh, to show the current status of the separate collection of packaging uh, all over Europe. As you can see, uh, there are a wide varieties. Uh, I think Vanya already mentioned uh, uh, that there are different systems uh, based on the local specifics uh, in Europe. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, see the positive sides of harmonizing uh, separate collection, uh, but also it's very important to find the right balance because it's, uh, we should not forget the overall goal, which is to recycle more and recycle with high quality. Uh, and the ways to do this uh, include different uh, tools that can be used. Of course, harmonizing is one of these tools, but again, we have to take into consideration the different aspects of this pro process. Uh, we try to summarize uh, the experience of our members, uh, how um, uh, pa packaging in our case is collected uh, all over Europe uh, and beyond. As you know, we have members in Israel and Canada and other territories outside the EU. Uh, and you see uh, that we try to summarize also what is uh, obligatory by national legislation. So what should be the labeling on the containers, uh, including colors uh, on, on the different, uh, for different types of packaging waste. Uh, you can see, so uh, sometimes uh, there is a of a numeric uh, decision used on the containers, uh, like in, the, uh, in Czechia or in Italy. Uh, there are also different symbols on the, on the containers. As already mentioned, there are different colors uh, and uh, more. 
So uh, already uh, in Norway, uh, we are showing what uh, Vanya already showed to the northern countries, the northern uh, managed system, uh, which is, of course, very useful to, to have this common system. But again, we have to have in mind that these countries are similar to background, to uh, geographical position. So uh, having such system uh, all over Europe, of course, will be challenging and should be very carefully thought. Uh, starting from the labeling, of course, which will uh, ease also the industry uh, when they sell their products uh, all over Europe. Uh, again, um, as you can see, uh, the different uh, ways uh, things are done, as already was said, and we made a kind of a summary of the experiences uh, in our members, basically different uh, practices or best practices, how to solve uh, existing issues and how to actually improve the systems. Uh, so, uh, for example, our Romania member uh, had a target of a number of recycling containers for every uh, 500 residents. Uh, of course, as I think I'm repeating, but uh, it is very important that uh, people, in order to do the right thing, uh, to put the packaging in the right container, they have to have the respective infrastructure uh, and they have to be informed. Uh, of course, uh, as already mentioned, it is very important to have a high quality uh, collection uh, in the bins or in the bags, uh, depending how the system works in a different country. Uh, so, uh, for example, FOS Plus, uh, as we all know, uh, living in Belgium, uh, some of us, that uh, they use transparent uh, uh, bags. So when there is a contamination or something which should not be in this bag is seen, uh, then uh, the, there are special red stickers uh, that are put on the bag. And then the residents uh, have to pay a fee or a fine, or uh, they have to explain why, why this is not done in the right way. Uh, again, as said, apart from the re relevant infrastructure, it is very important to communicate with the inhabitants, to explain to them uh, how they should separate their waste when uh, the waste is collected. Uh, for example, again, in Belgium, uh, there is a, a very strict uh, regime that you should put uh, your waste, uh, not only packaging, of course, the uh, different uh, types of waste uh, uh, between certain hours. So you cannot put them in the middle of the day, you should put them uh, after 6.30 or in the morning. Uh, so when there is very clear communication, of course, it's, uh, it's easier for the inhabitants to behave in the right way. Uh, um, our Finnish member, Rinki, uh, they are providing um, information also via different channels like television, uh, and of course, after such campaigns, uh, we notice the increase of the tonnage and quality of the uh, collected packaging waste uh, at source. Uh, in, in some cases, when there are problems in some local authorities regarding the quality of the separately collected waste, like in Italy, our member Konai uh, worked jointly with the local authorities to see uh, how they can improve uh, the the, the collection uh, quality. So they actually analyze the waste flows and identify uh, how to improve the system. Uh, also uh, considering the sorting plant requirements, uh, they, they did a market research and of course supported the local authorities with communication. Uh, I would like to um, uh, invite you to visit the uh, Expra website where you can see the very interesting communication campaigns of our members trying to inform but also motivate uh, the inhabitants uh, to sort their waste. Uh, and also, um, as already mentioned, the uh, digitalization is uh, and, and Internet of Things is uh, um, a new way that should be explored uh, by um, uh, local authorities together with the uh, EPR systems. Uh, so, for example, uh, in Malta, uh, that already was mentioned, uh, Green Pack has an um, interesting uh, project where they are uh, constantly monitoring uh, the filling of the containers. So, uh, they uh, organize a very efficient uh, collection system, uh, thus uh, diminishing the uh, negative uh, environmental impact on the collection uh, part. Uh, another interesting project is uh, of our Spanish member, Smart Waste, where a digital system is capturing the information from all the parts of the system and thus uh, ensuring uh, efficient sorting and recycling of the uh, packaging waste. Uh, another important uh, issue or consideration that should be taken into account, it is the harmonization of uh, the sorting center output grades and specification. Uh, we are very active uh, in uh, the SEN uh, Technical Committee, and we believe that such uh, standards will support uh, the, the collection and the receipt of uh, 
uh, they could uh, high quality uh, re recyclate. Uh, we have a very interesting project that uh, I hope will be interesting for you. Uh, this is uh, also can be found on our homepage. Uh, and this is a packaging for recycling uh, tool, which is an online tool, which you can uh, also um, use to see um, pack, uh, different uh, packaging items of the industry, whether they are uh, collected, sorted and recycled. But the most recent addition to this uh, website, website tool uh, is also the information on labeling. Because um, as already mentioned, uh, labeling is one of the ways to harmonize uh, separate collection as much as possible, of course, ensuring that there is a minimum information uh, necessary for the inhabitant to sort uh, their waste in the right way. Uh, and here you can see in which countries uh, there is a um, obligatory uh, labeling uh, that should be used. We all heard about the um, developments in France, in Italy, also in uh, Portugal, uh, which are um, selecting different ways of labeling, uh, which are not so much in line with the harmonization efforts. Uh, but again, uh, we believe that this is a very useful tool that can orientate uh, uh, external stakeholders, how things are being done in, in a different uh, member states. Um, and again, um, uh, I was uh, going to, to finish my presentation with uh, some examples uh, regarding the um, digitalization that was also mentioned as a way uh, to, to simplify and to make uh, life easier for the consumers to do the right thing. Uh, this is more and more uh, entering uh, uh, the, uh, our everyday lives. Uh, so uh, this is another way uh, both to save uh, uh, place on the packaging because the labeling is uh, both on packaging and on the bins. Uh, and we believe that this is a very um, useful and successful way to to organize the process in the right way. And this was my short presentation. And again, I would like to note that it's very important to have a right balance uh, between uh, keeping in mind the, the overall goal and doing things in the most efficient way, um, making life easier uh, for all stakeholders in the, in the value chain. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear, Mo, dear Moni, for your for your presentation. Uh, I try to note down during the four presentations some some key topics. I I heard a lot of uh, yes for a joint labeling uh, to make it easier uh, for the inhabitants to sort their packaging in the in the in the right way uh, with with some support for the the famous no. Nordic pictograms invented in, in Denmark and some support for, for digital solutions. We probably one one to go with the, where the with the other. There was some question uh, in the chat as far as I see uh, again on on the the uh, the right language to 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 put on. Uh, as, as it is called pictogram, I thought it is mainly relying on the color and on the symbol, but perhaps Nancy or someone else from Sweden or so on in, in the audience can elaborate sh shortly later on this as well. Uh, I heard a lot of yes on harmonization standards on the sorting output, so after collection on the next step. I heard uh, a yes uh, somehow to to roll out uh, framework economic instruments all over europe step by step but taking into account again the national the national situation i learned i heard a lot of no with regards to the collection models frequency colors of bin uh, that this is not useful because you cannot uh, squeeze uh, all European local authorities and re regions under one model, so it would be counterproductive, and it would uh, not be in line with with one of the principles of the European Union, the um, the subsidiary principles. Uh, I heard, I heard to use more be best practices. So even if a local authority is relying on a certain model perhaps to to reconsider from time to time whether this is uh, best practice or 
whether a change could could help but of course leaving it to the to the municipalities that's that is my very short summary of what what i he heard but i'm sure you you all have your own opinions and i'm very happy i see a hand anna karin gripwal i guess sweden but i'm surely not totally uh, sure so please anna the floor is yes. yours Thank you, thank you. Yes, Sweden, that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've been the project leader for the Nordic project. We got funding from the Nordic Council of Ministers in order to uh, roll this out on the Nordic level. So uh, I'm deeply involved with, with the work in all of the Nordic countries. Uh, and I just wanted to say you were asking about the, the, the languages and mm -hmm. um, uh, each country put it in their own language and we can facilitate the originals and you're just uh, the icon the symbol and then the white plate under and, and it is up to each country to translate it to the right uh, the right uh, fraction that you how you pronounce or how, how you uh, the, the name for the fraction and i also put in the chat that uh due to or uh, or the uh, the swedish uh, epa they asked us uh pre, two years ago i think it was if we wanted to or we had a, the ability to, to translate the uh, user manual into different languages and i put a link in the in the chat because we have translated it into uh eight different languages uh so that you can uh, read it in english or german or french or or whatever you find easier and uh and uh, you know so you get uh, some more information about it so mm -hmm. And I just, in the last thing, uh, we, uh, uh, as uh, Vanya said, we uh, uh, implemented, started implementing it this uh, uh, not quite two years ago. And already we have uh, 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 quite a bit more than 50% of the municipalities starting using it and about 200 uh, companies, uh, for example, Te Tetra Pak, which I think that you all know, quite big company. <laughs> so we're very happy, very pleased that uh, Tetra Pak is in, uh, endorsing it. So we uh, we believe that this will will uh, roll out very quickly in, in Sweden on, and also in the Nordic countries. Thank you. So I guess you will follow very closely the developments in Brussels. Huh? Yes. And we because have in, in the worst case, if they would decide for something different, uh, you would be forced to change it after a very small time, which would yes. be strange. Huh? But we are a part of, of uh, the JRCs and their, their studies. So we are, uh, we are, we are hoping that uh, it will be a labeling system somehow, not, not the, the bin system. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, any, any other questions or co comments around the labeling topic? Otherwise, I would, would give a tick to it and say it seems that we all agree uh, that a harmonized labeling uh, could bring some, some value. Uh, personally, I think that in the, in the far future, probably uh, digital solutions will, will make it even more easy for us, for those packaging who are a problem. Uh, for example, for packaging and for waste streams, because I still think that the interested inhabitant uh, is able for most of the waste items to take a, an e easy de decision. Um, in the chat, moreover, we had a, a question with regard to pay as you throw. Uh, it is an economic tool discussed for many, many years. It is working in, in some countries, uh, usually in those countries with a quite advanced uh, municipal waste management system. So, so can we more or less copy paste it with some transition deadlines to all countries? Is this possible? Or is this again too, would this be too much from Brussels to interfere uh, with the regional and local decisions. I, I, I have to say I have no, no, no opinion on this, so I would really, really be grateful if, if one of you, some of you would share your, your opinion with us. Perhaps I can come in here. Yes, Steve, yes please. Uh, from, from a view uh, with, a, with a broader view on, 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 on this uh, topic. I think it's, in, um, it's to incentivize um, consumers 
to do the right act, to, um, to, to, to go for reflecting on potential pay as you throw uh, principles uh, all across uh, Europe. Yeah. The Belgium example is perhaps a good example when you have a residual waste bin in, in my municipality, eh, uh, Sint Catlaine Waver of all places, nobody knows where it is, but okay, in Sint Catlaine Waver, you pay two and a half euros for your uh, residual uh, waste bag, but you only pay 0.25 euros for your blue bag. Eh? So 25 cents for your blue bag, two and a half euro for your residual bag. And so this incentivizes you to put the recyclables in the right bin. And I think that's a, that, that's a good opportunity and perhaps to be uh, explored in, in other countries too. But of course you have to have first that the inhabitants are paying for their waste at of all. Course you are and because yeah. as far as I know, this is not uh, outrolled all over the country. Vanya, please, you, you were raising your hand as well. Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to come back on the um, pay as you throw, but but also on the on the labeling, um, looking at it from a European pers perspective. So on pay as you throw, the Belgian example is actually quite flexible because it doesn't depend on. Um, oh, can you hear me? Because my internet connection apparently is unstable. But anyway, I'll continue. Uh, so it doesn't depend on. Um, the transparency of the um, payment system. So whether uh, citizens pay for their waste and know how much they're paying for their waste management or not, uh, because they don't need to get a separate waste bill. So even if you wanted to say in a municipality in Malta or in um, Sicily to start selling um, municipal mixed municipal waste bins and handing out bio waste bags and uh, packaging waste bags you could do it i would have to get permission or just go ahead and do it uh, because it may, it would be different to the way that waste is collected in the rest of the country but it is something which does not depend on the local authority sending out a separate waste bill to each household or to each citizen um the the other aspects coming back to the labeling system yes it is something which has been developed um, in the nordic countries and they have a certain very clear governance system which assists not only the rollout to citizens and in municipalities but also communication with the brand owners with the producers but it is also quite a simple system which can be taken up by um, member states and local authorities in the south of Europe and the east and the center of Europe. It's not a complicated system which enters into governance uh, or governance matters. It does communicate directly between the municipalities and the producers, of course, with the uh, EPR systems as well in that uh, chain. So we see it as, as possible and also because of its uh, low financial impact as a system, even more possible to, to roll it out um, at, at uh, local levels. And Joachim, coming back to what you said, yes, of course, there are many municipalities around Europe who are either not separately collecting at all or doing so very poorly uh, and they need to improve one of the key reasons why they cannot improve today is local governance it's not just local actually it comes to regional but also national governance when there is a lack of clear rules on how to collect the waste and how to treat it coming from the national waste management plan and then rolled out by uh, the regions if the regions are responsible for this then the local level is not able to make a different decision if they are then they are doing this without a permit and i believe that the labeling system can go part of the way to addressing that at least it is a first step and it is something which we can decide on at uh, at eu level 
And this is one of the reasons why we back it at Municipal Waste Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Of course, I think uh, some other countries might be not so happy uh, because they have established their own systems. So I, I know that uh, the German EPR systems have ju just started with industry and campa a campaign to label the packaging in a certain way. Uh, not to talk about our French friends who have, uh, to say it diplomatically, uh, the most strict and forcing way forward chosen to industry and, and to others, how, how, for example, packaging is labeled, some good initiatives in Spain, as far as I know, and in Italy. So we will all have to bring, bring it together, not to leave someone eh, fr frustrated, but uh, using the positive power in all, all, all the countries to, 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 make it, to make it happen. And in general, for the collection, what you just mentioned, Vanya, I'm a big friend of harmonization of the existing legislation. So to bring what we have decided already to real life, uh, because I'm, I've, I have often the feeling that people are, are stopping to follow what is happening in Euro Europe, because they are already struggling to implement what has been decided 10 years ago. So if we just add layer by layer, uh, we, we are losing them. Hmm? So um, I know this is not sexy and I know no one wants to hear it, but the, the hard work uh, to help the countries and the regions, uh, la la like we do with TAIEX before member states join, eh? something la like this in, in, in a strong way, uh, to to help countries to 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 get back to where the where the others are because if you see year by year the top ten are are advancing more and more and you are still struggling with uh, with, with with the situation I think this is not good so so I really think that there is we have we have the know how we have the money all, all of us so we should we should go the hard way and help help and support. And, and activate. Hmm? Any, any other may, comments? Uh, yeah. If I just quickly come back to you, Joachim, on that, absolutely agree with you. We spend so much time developing European legislation and rules. We need to focus very much on implementation so that everybody is uh, able, uh, in this scenario where we are in a circular economy, to recover the materials and benefit economically also from the recovery of those materials. Uh, so that we are not just talking in circles, but we are implementing the circles. Um, so yes, absolutely agree with you on that. And the money is there, the, the knowledge is there. So we just need to do it now and help each other do that. And here I have to say, I see a big role for ISWA to conclude our webinar today for promoting this fantastic association if you are not a member yet yet because uh, we have so many experts here uh, from private experts waste management companies public and and pri private local authorities and everyone so we have all these people working together and so i think we should uh, we should see perhaps together with the European Com Commission, with the, par the Parliament, how we can leverage uh, all these existing know-how in a better way. And I see a big role for ISWA there as well. So I'm, uh, it's easy for me, of course, then to pass the, this message to, 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 to the board member, Nancy, uh, to go back to the board and say, perhaps we have to be a little bit more active, even on the political political in brackets seen as in the past, no, not to be political, but to be practicable huh? and to help all our member states and re regions to move up uh, and, and to improve our waste management systems. It was a great uh, webinar. Thanks a lot for the, for the contributions, for the questions, for being with us. And I really hope to see all of you soon again. Follow the newsletters, the, web, the websites that, that our secretariat is sending around because there are much more valuable webinars, conferences, etc. taking place. See, see you all and a big thanks. Bye-bye. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. Bye.